Um, just to let you guys know, we are recording. Keep that in mind. Anything that you say or comes across your microphone will be a matter of public records. We will share this recording later on our YouTube channel. Um, so with that, we do have most of our participants here in person, but we do have one person joining us virtually, and that's Carol Schmitty. Um So welcome to the quarterly planning and oversight meeting uh, for LWIA 2015. Yep. This is September 15th, 2022, 4.30 p.m. and we are at the Community Center. So with that, I will turn it over to our chair, Mike Conrad. Good afternoon, good evening. Um, thank you for being here today. Let's go ahead and do the roll call, please. Okay. Casey Burkholzer, present. Kevin Busher. Mike Conrad. Here. Joy Fitz. Here. Chris Stroll. Here. Kim Taylor. <coughs> Carol Tracy. Here. Jeff Boyd. Here. And Connie Waltrip. Okay, we have quorum. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Review and approval of the June 16th minutes. Um, they were in our packets. Any questions about them? Any errors or omissions that we saw? Can't say that would happen. If not, can I get a motion to approve? I'll motion. Can I get a second, please? Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed, same sign. Fantastic. Conflict of interest disclosure. Is there anybody here that has a conflict of interest based on what we see in the agenda? If not, great. We'll go on to the grant recipient financial agent reports by Debbie. Okay. We will start off with the statement of expenditures. Basically, the majority of this packet is reviewing the end of the fiscal year ending June 30th. So um, the first page is our, the WIOA staff. The June 30th, you can see we ended at 91.3% of our budget. So we did not go over. Um, I'm anticipating for this coming year, it will probably be closer. The Fringe benefits, medical benefits, we actually had a little bit extra in there because Tony wasn't sure if he was adding a dependent to the Lakeland insurance. It didn't happen for last fiscal year, but he's anticipating it happening this next year, so it should be closer come this next year. But any questions on any of the lines on that one? <coughs> Just to give you an FYI, also the insurance committee at the college has been meeting. Um, they are looking at the possibility of the insurance going up January 1st, but I don't know that they have anything definite yet. Um, Bonnie sits on the insurance committee. So, okay. and I know I budgeted either five or 6% increase. So hopefully if it does go up, hopefully it will be under that amount. So hopefully fingers crossed, and, right? And you anticipated the five or 6% for the entire, entire, our fiscal year. Actually, so, I just, I just, whenever I got a spreadsheet, I just do January 1st through June 30th. Okay. So, so yes. So. You understand what I was going at is yeah. if you increase to 6% and it's only half of what our actual year is, we should be more than safe. Yeah. But, but whenever, whenever I do budget, I do try and just do that six month period. So that makes so sense too. Hopefully, hopefully we're safe no matter what. So great. Are we tagged along with the university? In other words, are we covered? that policy, our policy, or do we have a separate? No, we, everything benefits wise is through Lakeland. Okay. So, yep. Just wanted to know. Yep. Okay, if no question, other questions on that one, we can go to the next page, which is the apprenticeship grant um, for Nate. Basically this one is set up just a little bit different. It shows the entire grant period, which is January 1st of 2022 through June 30th of 23. So it's tracking up for the entire grant period versus a fiscal year like ours is. So that is where that stood as of June 30th. Any questions on that one? Why? I mean, why? Well, it's just two separate grants and for ours, our budget runs on a yearly basis. His grant was for a specific period of time. So whenever we, if we go to actually reapply for it, 
then we'll see if it's on a year by year basis and then it might be set up. Because we had budgeted it for 98,000 and we only, and we what spent 14 grand. Well, and the nine, the 98,000 is for the entire grant. So it's actually for an 18 month period okay. and he got hired in probably about three or so months into the grant. So, so if I would have tracked it like through June 30th, it wouldn't show a quite as clear picture. So this way I felt that it was easier to see the overall grant budget. So if it doesn't get spent, will we lose it? I think so. But we, we should be close, I would say, but in projections. Yeah, I mean, Projection this is spending. the first time this is the first time that we actually applied for this grant. So it was sort of a you never a, know. Yeah, so. it, it was a shot in the dark. We feel like we were pretty accurate as far as um, salary goes. Benefits did end up shifting a little bit, so we may reallocate a line there. Um, but then a lot of it is based on travel, training, and meeting expenses, and we didn't know what training and meeting expenses to expect. So that is a little bit more just our best guess, literally. Um, if we need more money, we were told that they will find more money for us. I don't think that we will leave much on the table at all, but we'll have a better idea in the next six months or so. I wasn't asking this critic in a critical nature. I just mm -hmm. wanted to understand. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a budget that, that only spent 14%. <laughs> Those yeah. are very good questions and we want you to have a good understanding. Yeah. And that's a good point because this is your first time at this meeting, so you don't even have that, that frame of reference. So feel free to ask away. And if that 14% was through June 30th, through the end of the grant, then yes, that, that would definitely be a problem. <laughs> but considering we have another full year on it, we I should be very close. So yeah. Cool. Thank you. No other questions on that one. We will move on to the council table report. These are basically the various bills that got paid over the last, well, from June through August. You'll see there's several incumbent worker training program um, that was paid for. Some travel, various expenses under Elon, which is the credit card company. Um, and then Lakeland, you'll notice on the second page, Lakeland, we've got the normal monthly rent, but we also, starting July 1st, our admin costs start picking back in again, and those will run until we hit the $50,000 limit, and then it will stop for the year. And that typically, about January or so, is when we hit that limit, so... Any questions on any of those? Okay, we can move on. The next one is the key metrics, and this is for as of June 30th. Um, the very first line that was ending June 30th of 2021, so that's been said and done. But the second line is what happened as of June 30th of 2022, so we met. We spent everything that we had for that 21 or the 20 grant. The third line, we hit our 80% obligation mark for the 21 grant. So we did do that. And then for the 21, that was just basically seeing where we looked for as long as we can spend the money through the rest of this fiscal year. Um, Actually, for this line, the year two, it's actually sort of done a complete flip-flop from last year. Youth, we are actually going to be spending all of youth very quickly this year, whereas last year we had a big issue with, we didn't think we were going to. Um, adult, we will definitely spend dislocated worker. That at this point, is probably the biggest concern to make sure that we get that spent. Now we can move money. We can do a modification to the grant and move some to adult if we feel that that would be our best bet. But as we sort of look at the numbers as they come in over the next month or two, that will probably be what we'll need to sort of see where everything sits. 
but as of right now, we should have no problem spending all of the money, just depending on if that dislocated worker money gets moved over to adults. But youth is definitely not a problem anymore. So the next line, the direct training expenses, we met the 50% that we needed to for the year. The next line for the 20 grant, the 50% of youth budget, we met that. The next line for the 21 grant, that is a not meeting and that probably will not be met for this coming year. We had a discussion based off of our youth expenses that we were seeing that Seth's had and they put on so many youth to try and get the money spent. The percentages got out of whack just to make sure that we were serving youth any way we could. So we do not anticipate seeing that 50% getting met. So we figure we will take our lumps with that from the state. They can give us technical assistance or whatever they determine is the result of it. And then we'll go from there. How close are we going to be? Not even close. They okay. they went like in off school. In end. school, youth was like off the charts. Okay. So we just want to spend the money because it's it's better to spend the I money understand. and not meet your percentage than to meet your percentage percentage, but they and have to get money, money back money. at the end right. of the year. Yeah. So, but I look at it and say too, if you're off by three or four percent, your lumps are not going to be near as hard as if you're off by twenty five or thirty percent. Yeah, it, it's going to be way off. Yeah. So they hit it real we, hard with in school youth. When we consulted with our uh, district manager at DCO, he said it's not going to be a significant finding. There will most likely be a finding, but it's not really, the percentage points don't seem to matter. That whether we miss it by 3% or 30%, okay. it's going to be technical assistance is going, going to be offered. Kind of like insurance. <laughs> <laughs> then the next line is the minimum 20% for work experience. We did meet that for the 20 grant. And the very last line, the minimum work experience, 20% for the 21. We're not meeting it as of June 30th, but we are planning, even though we might not meet the 50%, we are still going to structure the costs the best way we can to still hit that 20% work experience. So that's how we're going to approach the coming expenses for that 21 grant. Any other questions about that? The next is the training versus overhead. The very first page is what they look at at DCO. Requirement is 50% training for adult M1D and we had 63%. So we were very well set for that one. The second page is just an internal one where we look at all of our funding to see, including youth and trade, just to make sure that we're still not out of whack, like overhead is completely off the charts or anything. So now it's at 62.6%. So any questions on training versus overhead? Okay, the next is the provider contract budget. And as you can see, this year, basically, SES has a little under $3 million to work with. I just looked last to see what last year's was, and it was almost $3.6 million. So it's down almost $600,000 compared to last year. A lot of that is based off of not only were the allocations less, but they had less carryover or carry forward from the previous year. So like the youth is down over 400,000 itself. Adult is down by like 250,000 and 1D actually went up. So they have less to work with, but it's just, just a balancing act on what participants they can find to fill that funding. So. 
but that is the funding as of right now. The trade grant that will expire June or um, September 30th, and then we will reapply for a new one. But there is no new trade act because of Congress and all that. But anybody that's currently already a trade customer will be able to continue under trade. There's just no new ones. So. Is that under the new WIOA legislation? Is that why it's not out there? Or is that something, a completely different piece of legislation? I think it's, it's different. different. Like completely different, okay. It was, um, okay. I, I don't remember the exact details, but it was lumped in with a different act. And I cannot recall exactly what that was. And when that act was being reassessed and like sent back and all of that fun back and forth they do, they ended up just taking out trade and throwing it to the side to get that act to pass. That act okay. passed. Trade's just been left out there and no one's quite sure why or what's going to happen because it's been around for over 60 years. It's everyone has typically really liked it across the, the aisle. So it's just kind of, it seems weird that we're not hearing much about it. But I, I think we might after it sunsets and then we're out all those amazing benefits that those customers get when they're affected by international trade. Um, so just keep an ear to the ground that we'll hear something eventually. Any questions on that? Okay. The next is the MOU invoices. I just wanted to show that we did receive the final one from IDES on, back in June. So that is officially zero balance. And we just now wait until the November bill comes and we rebill everything back out. So. BC, you're off the hook. <laughs> I do. I don't I worry. My name's not on here, though. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> the next is incumbent worker training project. Basically included both last year and this year. The PY21 is everything that got paid last year. So we paid over 67000 in incumbent worker projects. Um, so a very good lump sum. And basically we actually left a little bit on the table. There was 5,000 some dollars because there was a, one of the projects did not come in quite as planned there at the very end. So we just yeah. basically used regular 1D cost to fill that out. And that left us the full 60,000 to transfer or to begin using as of this fiscal year. And as you can see on the PY22, so we've got the 60,000 carryover plus 80,000 that we allocated out of the new grant. And we've already got 83,000 of it already obligated at this time. Um, I know one of the projects is actually a little bit higher than what, it's at lower than what it shows on here. So we won't use quite that amount, but we've got a good start. To go towards the 140,000 that we've got set back for it. Questions on that? Okay, and the only other thing I just want to touch on the Lakeland annual audit that happens in July or late July, early August, the auditors typically ask for certain numbers regarding our grants and I provided that. They did not ask any follow-up to it, so we should get the audit results usually October, November-ish. So it's just sitting and waiting now. So that's all I've got. Anybody have any questions? Okay, if there's no questions or comments, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. And a second, please. Excellent. And I need a roll call vote on that, please. Okay. Daisy? Uh, yes. And I'm sure no. Mike Conrad? Yes. <coughs> Joy? Yes. Chris? Yes. Jim Taylor? Carol Tracy? Yes. Jeff Boyd? Yes. Okay, no Connie. All right, we're good to go. Excellent. Uh, the LWEA 20th performance report. Somebody doing that? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, Lori okay. and, and uh, 
Elaine, both are a little under the weather, so they couldn't be here. Uh, what was in the packet was the end of the year performance measures for Title I. You'll see we exceeded all the measures except for two, and we met those. Um, and I think what that one uh, uh, youth credential attainment rate, the one that we met, the percent of negotiated goals, 99.1%. We got 0.9% and we would have exceeded that one also. And that equal to, I think, one individual. So if we had one more youth come through with the credential, we would have exceeded that one. Um, and then the employment rate for dislocated worker in quarter two, we met that. Uh, that was several individuals we would have had to get to, to exceed that. Um, as far as, Jeff, for your information, I guess, try to understand. A long time ago, we would get these, these measures, and if you exceeded them by a certain percentage or whatever, there was this a grant at the end of the year, it was called incentive grant. So however good you did in your performance measures is how much incentive money you got at the following year. That's gone away. Um, so we still have to negotiate our goals with the state because the state uses our goals along with the 21 other areas for the state's goals to for Department of Labor. So I think when next week, two weeks from now, something like that, we've got a we've got a meeting with the, the Department of Commerce to negotiate these goals again uh, for the coming year. Uh, the, the object is to exceed your goal, but not to exceed it too much because two years from now they come back and go. And you exceeded that by 200%. You guys are great. So then your goal for that year is going to be your actual from two years ago. So it's kind of a balancing act of how they do it. Uh, I, Elaine and Lori are pretty good at going through the each pool of people that are in the measures to see who should be there, who shouldn't be there. Should we exit this person now? Should we exit them next month to try to, I'm not going to say manipulate, but manipulate the, the measures. So to ensure their accuracy. Yes. Is that a better use of word than minimum? So. Can you edit that out? I'll try my best. <laughs> but I'm not very accurate. <laughs> now, when you're negotiating the goal right now, you're negotiating for program year 22. All right. 22. Program and, year 22. And 20. 22 and 23. Okay. What the period would be June 1 of, of 22, 22 through June 30th of 23. Correct. Okay. So that's the FY23. Yes. But I think it goes into the following year because well, there's two grants each month. Every right. Year. You're messing You're with You're in the me. first year of one and the it's, second year of I've the other. I've got a lot one. to learn. Okay. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no Apparently, so do I. <laughs> well, I always forget because I go by, I always think in fiscal years and your program years run a little bit different than our, because we're in fiscal year 23 at the college. You're in program year 22. Okay, because you've got two program or two grant cycles in there, right? Or whatever they're called. Yeah, so you're on program year 21 and program year 22 now. Or is it or program grant. year 22 and program year 23? We have the grant numbers are 21 and 22. See, 20, I, the county <laughs> start no, uh, December 1st, the feds start October, October 1st, 1st and yeah. the state starts July 1st, and we have to balance all of those too, so I understand that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a wonder why we get things screwed up. But anyway, that's all about the measures. If, any, if you got any questions about them, uh, sure, let me know. I'm, I'm, Absolutely. I'm starting to, you, you, it's a, like I said, it's a balancing act. And it's getting less muddy. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll, get, it'll take a little while, but I'll get there. But it gives them a little bit of guidance of where they need to go, how many people they need to get, which funding stream, or what. we we'll put some people in short-term training so they get their credential now versus two years from now. It's just a balancing act. So They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They've done it for a lot of time. Sounds like it. Yes. Board appointment update. What was that me again? As you again. We're skipping your uh yeah well there was nothing for the program and fiscal monitor report i and we haven't monitored cefs since the last board meeting or the last planning and oversight so really nothing to report there i think we are we're waiting on the department of commerce to give us their final letter for when they uh monitored us last fiscal year uh we should have had it by what the end of june or end of in may, may. we asked when we could expect it and i asked point blank will we have it by june meeting and they're like yeah maybe well, we still won't have it yet, so, yeah, so it's, I'm waiting on even an ETA 
So I haven't come that yet this week either. So anyway, uh, moving on to the board appointments, this is more of an informational thing for this uh, for this group. Uh, we're getting we had quite a few people that are leaving the board and or getting replaced. Uh, see, Casey took over for Patty Metzger. Uh, Lewis Ryder from Cumberland County is retiring. Adam Flack from Department of Rehab is getting replaced by um, somebody in our area. He takes care of more Champaign, Mattoon, Coles County up north. This person down here takes care of Effingham down towards Richland. It's more of our geographic area and she's new. So we, we they didn't want to appoint her until she got her feet wet a little bit. So anyway, uh, her name is Carol Lynn Jorgensen. Uh, Tiffany Mackey, um, we are replacing her with Courtney Yaki from Effingham County. Uh, Lisa Erbacher from Clay County is being replaced by Cassie Iger from IMEC, the Illinois Manufacturing Excellence Corporation. Uh, Dave Cole from Mol Moultrie County has resigned. Uh, he will not be replaced. And Stacy Parr from Title V has resigned as well, and she will not be replaced. So we are at the bare minimum that we can have to be compliant with the law as far as our 51% business sector, 20% CBO and labor. So if we add one more person either way, we're going to have to add somebody else in that other group to stay with stay with the percentages. So, so we're allowed to leave? No. <laughs> That's what I heard. You <laughs> cannot leave. And she is a mandatory partner, so you cannot leave. <laughs> What's the balance and how many people are on the board? Okay, we have, we're going to have 26 at the beginning of October 1st when all of the paperwork gets turned in. We're going to have 26 people on the board. 51% of that has to be from the business sector. Okay. And 20% of it has to be from a community-based organization or a labor union. Uh, and that, and then you still have to have all of your mandated partners as well. Like Casey's got to be on there. Title four has got to be on there. Title two, as in Chris has got to be on there. There's just a lot of different requirements uh, and still try to meet those percentages. So right now, as of October one, we are going to be at the bare minimum. We cannot have less than 26 people on our board just because the percentages won't work out. So we have to have 51% business. Yes. I should already know this. Um, and 20% you said CBO or labor union, or that Combined. is a lump CBO? Slump. Okay, gotcha. What do you count in Courtney Yaki? Economic development. Okay. Is there a certain amount of economic you have development? You have one. And how many CEOs are on, on the board? Um, in our bylaws, we stated that we would have up to five CEOs, but... Uh, there's no requirement from, by, from the law that says we have to have a, a CEO on the board. <clears throat> well, it's more a function probably of who best should be on the board. Obviously, you want, you know. Right. I mean, exactly. And you're coming to, got, coming to the meetings anyway. Yeah. So it, it's, it's better to have that. If you're, see, you're not. I'm not on the board. You're not on the board. You're just a CEO. So we we have not, several, like Jim Boland from Clark County. He's a business owner. So he's right. in private sector and on the county board. So he's a. He fills two roles, so I sold my business. So you can't. <laughs> yeah, well, retirement's good. <laughs> so anyway, that's the update about the, the board appointments. It's just more of an informational thing, so you all know what's going on. Um, to kind of go into that, we just got our letter for our recertification that we turned in last October. We just got it like last week, I think. So it took them a full year to go through 26 pieces of paper and say we were okay. So. And that, that's all I got. Like, Excellent. A date and time of the next meeting, is that December 8th? Yep. Is that when we're doing it? Yep. 4.30 here, possibly. As far as, the, as, far as we know, of it should be here. The steps is they will be getting new carpet in into October, into November. Um, but just to make sure, because things are getting delayed all the time across all industries, um, we're planning to go ahead and be here for December's meeting um, and then the Effingham Event Center for the board and CEO meet, the Monday meetings. How are they doing with servicing clients not having that facility? Is it a challenge that, for them? That facility is not a client-based uh, facility. That's their oh, central, uh, that's their central okay. office. 
where Casey's at over here, the unemployment office. Okay. That's where we are. Case managers are at that serve the clients. So as far as clients go, it's it's been a non-issue. Good. Correct. Thank you. I was not aware of that. Any public comment? Need a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. I'm comfortable doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> And I will second that. Thank you guys. I will stop recording now.